we have a box opening and this should be a hot point television I should really write my Arabic branding on this because that really makes people wonder what the hell is going on maybe I'll do that um, this is going to be an interesting video because well just unboxing it because of course UPS shipped it so we probably have a box of glass and plastic parts that need to be sorted out before we you know probably a necked picture tube but anyway uh, yeah this should be a hot point television that someone with not a lot of experience attempted to fix one of the I can replace the capacitors in anything old and it'll work again like it was new crowd yeah you know I think I'm just gonna talk shit through this video I never do that but I, I'm just in the mood to just roll with it right now so let's let's open this box and see uh, what kind of cluster we got oh my oh my I tell people I try and grind on people when they when they send me something I always try and grind on them and say you have to pack it so it could be handle a five foot fall So the owner want the the guy that owns this just wants to see it work again, and I, I don't blame that. That's that's cool. Did this thing actually survive this trip like this? One thing I will say loud and clear right at the beginning of this video is if we get this working, I assume absolutely no responsibility for if it works when you get when you get it back because if I repack it in this box like this, you know, it's one of those act of God things if it survived the ship shipping here like this. Well, the tape took some of the paint off. Crap. Okay, did, the, you know, this looks a lot like those little GEs. You know, I restored a couple of those. They come with they come in different colors. This looks a lot like one of those. I mean, it really looks a lot like one of those. In fact, it it was a it was a pretty long series of videos on it because it turned out that somebody had rebuilt the picture tube and they didn't coat the back of the picture tube with Aquadag. They just spray painted it black. So there were there was this weird noise in the picture because there was no fil filter capacitor on the high voltage. So there was ripple getting into the anode. It was a very entertaining video. Let's get this open and check the valve bulb, picture valve bulb. This is a GE. This is the same thing. I don't remember the model number, but 
This is a GE. I don't care what this says. Fourteen QP four. Fragile glass picture tube. Do not expose to UPS. Okay, let's test this. Let's test this thing. And um, I was kind of chatting with the owner of this and he couldn't get any voltage on the plate cap. And the way you have to measure this is you have to disconnect this and then on the female side, on the female side here with this disconnected, you should have B+. If you try and measure this voltage with this connected and it's working, whatever meter you're testing it with, you might as well just throw it in the trash because it'll cremate it instantly. So he couldn't get any B+, here. And, um... Said he was going to put the schematic in the, uh... God, is that a getter or is that tungsten boil off in that? Jeez. Okay, 14... This is a GE, by the way. This is a GE. I have a series of videos on this from the time Chris and I went and picked three of these up from Craigslist to the time I got one of them fully restored. Uh, cheap TV, like anything GE, built to a price. But you know what? They, they're cute and they work, so... Uh, whatever. Not bad. I'll take that. That's actually pretty strong. So we have something good to work from here. Um, it might have been smart that he unplugged this because it's possible that that might have saved it from this breaking off. I don't know. I just... I just hate to fix it and then send it back in that. And I understand the desire to cut corners and save money on shipping. You know, shipping is extremely expensive. I bet this costs 50 to 75 dollars to ship this here, right? And the TV isn't worth that, but uh the owner has been persistent with it and he wants it to work and you can't blame him for that so he wants to see it work so we're gonna see if we can make that happen but as far as repackaging it like that when it works and sending it back I don't know man that wallet might have to open up a little bit wider what is that right there What do we have? I forget how you even get the chassis out of this. Um. Okay, so what 
when you get into something like this, uh, if you're if you're somebody who's watching these videos, me, radio, TV, phono nut, B Anderson TV, etc. You know, take a take a long look at, at the way if you're gonna get into a TV. And I'm not name dropping or singling anyone out as being more proficient than the other, but take a look at B. Anderson TV stuff. He is uh, what I would consider on the over overkill side of doing things meticulous and uh, picture perfect and better than the way the factory did it. Much more so than I am. I'm I'm. Uh, I'm not nearly that refined and spend that much time on stuff. So let's take a look at this. So it looks like what he did is he cut the old capacitors off the top here and wrapped the leads around. I, at least I hope you wrap the leads around and created a good mechanical connection. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. That's an approved way to do it. Uh, the way you see here. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. I mean, some of these things, obviously he was able to get to the bottom of this board and he was not able to get to the bottom of this board, it looks like. So, um, this right here needs to go. I don't know why that wasn't changed. That could very possibly be, I'll have to look at where that is in the circuit, but these things are notorious for shorting and leaking. Not that that's causing the problem. But um, this selenium could quite possibly be expired. They, they high internal resistance, we know about them. This right here, I guess that's factory. Um, this here, I wonder what's going on with this. Okay, it looks like he cut it open and restuffed it, but where where are the ground leads from the capacitors? I see one lead here. Where is the ground lead? And I, I think this uses a doubler circuit. Let's, uh, let's open this up. Yes. Did you try and solder to the aluminum can? Is that, is that what I'm seeing here? And this smells, well. Did you try and solder this to the aluminum can? Solder doesn't stick to aluminum. Uh, what's going on with this here? Okay, look at that. Um, You know, there's a lot of little tricks that you learn working on this stuff over time, and and I'm not knocking it. Well, whatever. I'm not knocking anybody for anything because things that I just know automatically, I would take for granted that somebody else would not know those same things. So, and and things that you might know watching this video you might 
take for granted that somebody else just would have absolutely no idea. This is a horrible schematic, but basically we come in through our, our diode there, our, and then we have a 300 microfarad here. 140 volts, 135 volts. I can't believe this thing doesn't use a doubler circuit. But I guess that's accurate. So, there's no reason to have this in this can at this point. Um, we're not on beauty patrol here because it's in so deep inside this TV where no one can see it. So, we, we'll, we'll clean this up. We'll start by cleaning this up. And then... Um, we'll go from there. I don't know if I should make this two separate videos or make this all one video. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay, so let me let me correct, let me, let me point this out. So these tabs here, see these tabs? They're not aluminum, they're steel. And what that is, is that's a separate piece of metal that's crimped in there. Uh, it's that ring is crimped in down below. I know it looks like all one piece, but it's not. So the way to do this would have been just to drill another hole and pull that other lead through and, and solder it on to solder it to here because this is steel and this is aluminum. And if it does in fact just get its ground through the function of being in this clip then you've got even another problem with that because now you've got uh, this isolated from here by means of, of the cut in the can so this is something where you really have to kind of watch what you're doing um, we got to get this out of here though I, I got to figure out what that is but that's got to go and that's not a problem. I have 1,000 volt caps all day long over here. And check this out. Okay, so there's where the cord connects right there. So you can see how they have that connected to the chassis right there. Come on, focus in on that, you stupid thing. So you see that line right there? And then for some reason they have that black wire comes up here and is connected to this pot so I'm not quite sure what their method of thinking is running the entire grounding for this thing through that uh, I mean that's the entire return path to uh, the line is through that uh, yeah, that's questionable, but whatever they designed it, it's a hot. This is a hot chassis set. This is as hot. Um, actually, the the this is not connected to the line. It's floating. The chassis floats on these uh, insulator bushings, so it's not. It's not like this is actually, it's probably isolated through a capacitor, but as far as the chassis chassis, the chassis is hot. It's tied right to the line. Just took a quick look at some of these capacitors. This one is right, this one is wrong. These are both 0.022s, and then let's take a look at this one on the schematic. This is the vertical deflection circuit. So, this is one of the 0.022s, and this is supposed to be a 0 0.015, and he put a 0 0.022 in there. I'm not sure that's going to work right. The vertical deflection circuit is very critical. And this one right here, at the top that comes off the plate, the 1,000 volt job, 
that as the .015 L Minco that's in there, and that those are very um, touchy. All, everything in this circuit is very touchy as far as the value goes, much more so than any other part of the TV. Now, as far as the electrolytics, we got a 30 here. We have a boost filter, which comes off of the boost line here. The boost 270 volts comes up here, over here. So right here we got a 60. And then we got over here, we got two capacitors in the B plus. So that's it, this thing has four electrolytics total. So I trace this out. This right here is the, the filter cap that connects to the audio output transformer. That's probably just to keep audio from getting back in and inter interfering in the other circuits. And then here we got our, um, this is our B plus filter number two, the one that comes after the choke. So it comes out of the rectifier. One capacitor through the choke, comes out of the choke over to here to the next capacitor. And then this thing right here is the B plus. So this is the 60 or 68 microfarad replacement at 450 volts. So this is all relatively low voltage. Uh, I haven't checked any of the rest of these caps, but this is supposed to be a .047. He put a .1 in there. Um, that blue capacitor, that is right there. So basically the voltage comes up. That's supposed to be a .047. I don't know if that's going to affect it. Um, I'm willing to leave those in and put it back together and try it. But ideally, you know, you want to replace these with the same value that you took out. This is it's tube equipment, it's not that critical, but it might affect it, especially in the vertical. So we'll have to see how it performs when we get it working. We still have the issue that he complained about, which is that there was no voltage on the horizontal output tube, but I need to clean this up before I even power it up. Um, it doesn't appear that any of this actually affected that because it comes through the ch it comes out of the rectifier into the choke out of the choke directly into the damper tube so I kind of think that there's another problem there somewhere but let me go ahead and clean this up maybe I'll check some of the tubes if I got time and then we'll go from there I just checked the damper tube and the horizontal output tube and the flow of electrons on these are, is pretty simple. He checked here with the cap disconnected and he wasn't getting any DC voltage. Now the flow of electrons is real simple. It comes in here through the plate of the damper, comes in through the damper comes up through the flyback and it comes to the top of the tube there. I'm going to ohm this out real quick. I'm going to check from the plate cap here to this, what is that, pin three. I have one side of my meter there attached to the plate cap of the horizontal output tube. The other one I'm going to pin, probe pin three and I'm looking for 17 ohms. So let's see what we got here. Pin one, two, three. And we have 16.3 ohms. 
the flyback is not open so I don't know why he wasn't getting voltage to that cap unless it's something here. Let's go over what I've done here and this is a bit like polishing a turd so you're not going to get anything real great. I'm working with the capacitors that he included. So the first thing I did is I installed a terminal strip here and I removed the tuner on this side and I put a nut and bolt through it. You could see instead of just a self tapper and then as well as that for ground I also you can see this black wire here that comes around and goes into right here well there's a solder pot there for a ground so I'm not just depending on the bolt ground I've also got that ground now I've got that ground coming over here through this yellow wire connected to here as a redundant ground to this being soldered to the capacitor holder so um, that solder is good it did take but I still got a redundant ground so I've got my B plus here coming out of the rectifier coming over here to the main filter and then as well as going through the choke back over here and then coming over to this filter and that's ground this filter is the one on the uh, audio tube and this filter here which is the 68 at 450 that's the boost so uh, it's about as good as I could do I'm just gonna blob some silicone on this I'll silicone this all down. Kind of an interesting note, in the past I've worked on sets and we've seen a like a 1N 4007 just paralleled with the selenium diode, selenium rectifier, and that looked a little bit cheesy, but I was looking at a trade publication and from the 60s and they actually said that that's an acceptable repair these things never apparently short the internal resistance just goes up and up and up until uh, eventually they'll go up to the point where either the voltage will drop to where the thing is not usable or they'll burn up but it's a, a totally acceptable repair to just leave it in circuit and just jump across it with a silicon diode. So I thought that was interesting. We'll get into that later. So I think I'm good here. I've, I've I've kind of done the best I could with this and this is all I checked this with a magnifying glass. The solder took so, I um, guess I could power it up and see if we get any high voltage. Right, the thing has got power to it. I'm checking, I'm going to check here first. There won't be any filaments because the picture tube is not plugged in. It's a series string set. And I don't really want to run it for that long because um, without a load, you know, the, the power is up pretty high. Oh, you know what? We're not going to get any power on the... Um, plate cap because uh, the damper tube needs to heat up but we've got B plus for sure. I have jumped the filament here on the uh, picture tube so remember you always want to check this with this disconnected. 126 volts. Now if I connect that, we should get high voltage. Um, let me get my meter out of here. I don't want to cook my meter. Get that as 
far away as possible. Oh, hear that? High voltages are the horizontal frequencies. There we go, that's a little better. Okay, we have high voltage. So the flyback is working. Just gonna go ahead while I'm in here. I sprayed all the controls. Uh, who knows, I might put it together and it might actually work with the wrong capacitor values in it. You never know this. So much tolerance in this tube stuff that um, uh, we might just work with the capacitors off, resistors off. It's not that critical. About ready to power this up, I've inserted it back into the case and I just attached a speaker there. I took the speaker out and removed it so I didn't punch a hole in it. Uh, even if everything's working right, I know this is not in the right place, so I'm going to have to move that around. I have a feeling that we're going to have problems with the vertical circuit in this, and this is not an easy set to work on because of the way. The chassis is basically down in this tunnel, so power it up. And uh, hopefully, oh, we're seeing something glow there, okay. Well, that's good to see. Uh, there goes that. Oh, I hear the vertical and I hear the high voltage. Man, I hear the horizontal too. Okay, brightness is all the way up. Contrast is whatever. I'm going to try moving this ion trap around. I have no idea where it goes. I have no idea if it's on right. I These things are a big... Actually, let me play with that. Well, look at this. We're starting to see something on the screen here. But uh, it's all whacked out. And look at where the ion trap is. That doesn't look right. So I'm going to I'm going to pull it out and turn it over. All right, well, here's what I got. Um, let me adjust the vertical and see if I can There we go. Get the camera to quit blanking it so much. So, yeah, we've got some issues there where I ended up with the uh, uh magnet is right there. And I wonder if that red dot is to indicate that that's where it goes. I don't know. Um, nothing on the sound here. It's have something to do with that.
so I don't know if I reassembled this right. This adjusting these are are uh, what um, center it. I could play with those a little bit. Yeah, so screwing with the centering rings brings it right in. Let's look at you! Since you want to steal the friggin' show over here... Okay, so at least we got a full raster here, and that's just what it is. It's just a raster because there is no activity at all. Um, there is no activity at all. I mean, the audio's, a, audio's clearly alive, but besides that, I've never seen one where when you move the channel selector, it's just dead. It's just dead silent. I'm gonna start by checking a couple of these tubes in the IF. And uh, I, I do see the short occasionally, so we'll go through and check the 3CB6. And that one appears to be pretty good. Let's try this one. If they're shorted, they'll show grid emission and all kinds of weird weirdness. So I think what I'm going to do No, nah, there's no shorts here. Okay, well check this one out. This is the 5X8 and that is that one right there, the mixer oscillator. It looks like good 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 emissions, right? Look at when I go to grid leakage. And uh, let me go to shorts. It's not showing any shorts, but um, that that grid emission that's uh, wide open. Well, I don't know. Nope, it ain't clearing out. Uh, 5X8, and we got 5E2 and E7. So if we go over here to an E7. Look at that. What is... Oh, we got a short there. We have a short. Huh. You know this five six 
6x8 is the common FM radio front end tuner tube. Let's see what this one is here. Okay, this is the front end tube. No grid emissions, no shorts. All right, 5x8, I'm looking at you. If the uh, if the thing was leaky enough to where it wouldn't oscillate, then it could very well give us this exact symptom of just completely dead. Uh, 5x8, where am I going to find one of those on uh, Easter Sunday? Probably in my garage, right? Doubt Home Depot's open. Okay, that's the 5x8 out of my TV, my GE, which is the same. So we're going to power it up here and see what, see if we get any activity. If only I would be so lucky, right? You be careful with these old coax things. If they get bent the wrong way, they can short the shield to the, uh, you know what? Um, is there, I don't believe there's an AGC adjustment on this. Let me have a look. This thing is from 57, 56, 57. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video here. This will be part one of the Hot Point uh, 14S202, 14S203. Oh, that's a UHF. So this is a 14S201 or 14S202. I don't know, whatever. I'm going to break this off. Um, as part one of this because it's going to get too long. The, the big problem with these multi multi uh, repair videos on a TV is a lot of times people won't even bother to watch the second part or they'll come in on the second part and they won't watch the first part. So I'll break this off right here. In the next part, what we'll do is we'll pull the B&K 1077 out, which will allow me to substitute all of these signals. And uh, this is not going to be easy to work on because you can't get to the back of the chassis very easily with this. So i got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I, you can use two ad test adapters. But the problem is, is when those things, because they extend the leads like th two inches, then you have problems with RF. So those things will kill the set from working in the IF by themselves. So this will be part one. We got the high voltage up, got a raster, but apparently something in the front end is dead. Part two will be starting with the video and working our way back through the IF to find out what's not getting voltage or what's what uh, section is or stage is dead. I hope it's not the tuner. I hope it's but that's no problem we can inject the IF right into there. And um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you take the time to check out part two. It'll probably be 
couple two or three weeks I got some other pressing stuff so we'll see you then